What's going on there YouTube and welcome back to another comic book video. This is the channel where we sit down and cover different comic book stories from different comic book companies. Today we are going to jump back over to DC Comics and we are going to begin our coverage over one of the many DC New 52 crossover events but this one is called Hell on Earth. It was a Superman, Supergirl, Superboy crossover event where basically in the early days of DC New 52, they made this crossover as a way to pull in their new readers to read more Superman comics. And so of course we got this crossover event with the new character known as Hell who is going to attack Earth for a particular reason. And the only ones who can stop him is Superman, Supergirl, and Superboy. And this was a long crossover for these characters. It was 14 parts. And so in this video, we're going to cover the first seven parts. And then next we cover the second half in that video. So if you enjoy today's comic book video, please hit the like button down below and subscribe. But here we go. Hell on Earth Part 1 through 7. To begin today's video, we actually pick up with Superman number 13. Now, we actually do see Superman right now working out in a science facility known as The Block. The Block is this research facility that is actually located right next to the core of the Earth. Now with that being said, the reason why Superman is working out in this facility is because in Superman Annual Number 1, he became friends with someone known as Dr. Shea, and she is the one in charge of the block. Now we actually skipped over that issue because honestly, there was no point for us to cover that one single issue. But in that issue, of course, he met Dr. Shea and Dr. Shea brought him here as a way to learn more about his powers to see if his powers are actually still evolving even though he has been on earth for a long period of time but either way superman has been down here for five straight days which means he has to leave here and go back to the surface world and be clark kent once again because He's been gone for so long, of course, there could be people out there actually looking for him and wondering where in the world has Clark Kent gone to. And so, of course, he does leave and head back to his apartment. Now, there is a page that does remind us that Jimmy Olsen is actually staying at the apartment of Clark Kent. And the reason why, because for Jimmy Olsen, his old apartment had a bug problem. And so, of course, with that having a bug problem, he needed somewhere to crash at until that problem was resolved at his old place. And so, of course, he has been staying at Clark Kent's apartment. But when Clark Kent goes home, he sees that Jimmy Olsen is actually in the shower with some random lady. But honestly, that right there is not important for right now. Because when Clark Kent actually arrives at work, the Daily Planet, of course he is confronted by his two bosses, Perry White and Lois Lane. Now of course, with Superman, Clark Kent being gone for five whole days, he has not published not one single article for Perry White. And that is a huge problem. And you have Perry White say, listen, Clark, you were assigned to cover any kind of Superman story. And we have not gotten one single story from you in five single days. Now, for Clark Kent, he feels like the Daily Planet publishes way too many Superman stories and they need to slow down on that. But of course, you do have Lois Lane remind Clark that he is the reporter and Perry White is the boss, which means that if Perry White says, give him a Superman story, Clark has to do it. Now, that is when Lois Lane does receive a text, but when she does, Clark Kent does use his x-ray vision as a way to read what she is texting or who she is texting. And that is the moment he finds out that Lois Lane's new boyfriend, our newest boyfriend, is going to move in with her. And of course, that makes Clark Kent very upset because he still has feelings for her, but on top of that, 
They're supposed to be close friends and Lois Lane has not told Clark that she is thinking about moving in with this new guy. Now this is the moment where we actually see Clark Kent get fired from the Daily Planet. And how does he get fired? Well you see, while he is on his computer and supposed to be working on a Superman story, he is not. But that is when he is confronted by his big boss, Morgan Edge. Now Morgan Edge is the one who actually owns the Daily Planet. And so he is able to see what every single person is doing on their computers. And when he sees that Clark Kent is not writing a Superman story like Perry White told him to do, of course Morgan Edge is very angry. And he tells Clark, hey, I'm pretty sure that you're supposed to give me a Superman story and you're not doing that. What in the world do you think you're doing? Now, this is the moment where you actually have Clark Kent say, you know what? I'm tired of working here because Morgan Edge is a crooked person. He has done some crooked things. And so this is Clark Kent trying to call out Morgan Edge saying that, He's just using the Daily Planet as a way to gain more power in Metropolis. But on top of that, he does call out Morgan Edge for being somebody who is crooked. But of course, you have Morgan Edge say, you know what? You're fired. If you don't want to write me a Superman story, then you can go ahead and leave. And so of course, Clark does leave and now he has no job. Now Clark Kent did try to get other people involved to stand up against Morgan Edge. The problem is no one did except one person and that one person is Cat Grant. But either way, you do have Cat Grant try to cheer up Clark Kent because she says that what he did was very inspiring. But of course for Clark Kent, he does not care because right now he has no job which honestly really sucks. But that is the moment he comes to find out that something is going on in his city. Something is attacking Metropolis. And that is the moment you have Clark Kent leave Cat behind and he does change into his Superman outfit. But when he goes to see what in the world is going on in Metropolis, of course, there is a giant monster attacking the city. And the question is, where in the world did this monster come from? Now you do have Superman realize that he has no idea what kind of monster this is. The only thing he knows is that this monster is causing damages all over the city, which means he needs to hurry up and get rid of this monster. And so you do have Superman fight against this monster, but this monster is actually very powerful to the point this monster sends Superman flying across the world and he crash lands in Ireland. Now, you do have Superman continue to fight against the monster and he does find a way to actually defeat it by really just setting it on fire, which of course does kill the monster. But the question is, where in the world did this monster come from? Because of course, it did not come from Earth. But this actually leads us right into the Hell on Earth event. And the reason why I say that's because that is the moment you have Supergirl appear. And Supergirl is very angry at Superman for what he just did, which is killing that monster. Because that monster is actually from Krypton. And that is very, very huge. Because now the question is, how in the world did this monster from Krypton arrive on Earth? But on top of that, we actually saw this monster back in our last Supergirl video because Supergirl Fortress told her, hey, listen, your cousin is right now fighting against a monster that is from Krypton. You need to go stop him. And so that is why she is here. But while she is yelling at Superman, that is when we see somebody is standing above them. And that person is, of course, the main bad guy of this crossover event. Now we do pick up with Superboy number 14 because again, Superboy is part of this event. Now I do wanna mention one thing. We did skip over a lot of issues when it came to Superboy. 
and not in the Superboy series, but actually in the Legion Lost in the Ravager books. And we did not cover those books because to me personally, those books right there did not matter enough to make a whole video about them. But either way, I can give you a quick rundown in what happened in those books. You see, Superboy was actually teleported by Detective Lore to where Caitlin Fairchild was at, a close friend of Superboy. But when he got there, of course, he was confronted by Harvest, the big bad guy we met in our earlier videos of Teen Titans and Superboy in the New 52. But that is the moment that Superboy found out that Harvest had installed a code word that could actually make Superboy go crazy. And so of course he did go crazy, but thanks to the Ravagers and the Legion Lost crew, they were able to calm him down and say, hey man, you're not a bad guy, you are a good guy. But of course, he did not trust Detective Lore because to him it seems like Detective Lore personally brought him there to help out Harvest, but in reality, she had a different plan. But of course, he does not care, and so he flies away to go back home to his apartment. Now, when Superboy get back to his apartment, well, that is when he finds out that Bunker is there. Now, of course, Bunker is part of the Teen Titans at this point in DC's New 52. But either way, Bunker is actually the only close friend that Superboy has in DC Comics at this point. But either way, you do have Superboy tell Bonker everything that had happened to him when it came to Harvest and of course the evil organization known as Nowhere that took place in those Ravagers and Legion Lost books that we did not cover. But of course, that is the moment you have Bonker say that it's probably best for Superboy to come with him and come see the rest of the Teen Titans. Because right now it seems like Superboy needs all the support he can get right now because he has gone through so much in the last couple days. Now when they get outside the apartment, well that is the moment you actually have Superboy realize that there is someone following them and of course that is when he is confronted by the big bad guy of the book. Now we have no idea what this bad guy name is just yet, but either way, Bonker cannot see the bad guy, only Superboy. But that is the moment you have the bad guy tell Superboy that he finds him very intriguing. And the reason why, because he is a clone. And he's wondering how in the world was Earth able to make a clone with their technology? Because to this bad guy, Earth, is so far behind in technology that there is no way they should have been able to make a clone like Superboy. But either way, he does begin the process of beating down on Superboy. But again, Bonker cannot see the bad guy. And so he's kind of like, okay, so our Superboy just went crazy. I need to call in the rest of the Teen Titans because I need some help here, clearly. And so, of course, you do have Bonker use his powers as a way to put a big T up in the sky that does tell Wonder Girl and Kid Flash that, hey, Bonker needs some help. Something is going on in the city. Let's go. Now, I do want to mention that right now, the Teen Titans are a tad bit short staffed. Because Red Robin at this point in DC Comics is part of Death of a Family. And also Skitter, another member, has gone missing. And so right now it's just Solus, Kid Flash, and Wonder Girl going to help out Bonker with the whole Superboy problem. But getting back to Superboy, who is fighting against our mysterious character, well, that is the moment we come to find out that this character has a lot of different powers. And of course, Superboy is having a hard time fighting against this man because this man shows that he is more powerful than Superboy. And so right now, Superboy is getting his butt kicked all over the place. And it does seem like that most likely our mysterious character could actually kill Superboy if someone does not step in to help him fight against 
this mysterious character. But you do have the Teen Titans actually step in to help out Superboy. But when they do, of course, that is the moment they come to find out our mysterious character is actually studying Superboy, learning more about him. Because remember, our mysterious character, this big bad guy, was very intrigued on the idea that there is a clone of some random Kryptonian on Earth because he believes that technology on Earth is so far behind. So how in the world were they able to make a clone? But either way, you do have him say that Superboy has two different kinds of DNA attached to him. And that is very interesting. Either way, you do have the Teen Titans actually step in to battle against our mysterious character. But again, he's just too powerful. He has a range of many powers to use against his opponents. And so he was able to take out the Teen Titans very easily. And when they try once more again to go after him, well, that is the moment he just teleports away with Superboy. And so now the Teen Titans must be worried because they have no idea what in the world that man is going to do with Superboy. Now getting back over to Superman and Supergirl, they have no idea about the new threat on Earth who just attacked Superboy. But they are back at the block where Dr. Shea is right now studying the new Kryptonian creature that had appeared from nowhere. Except with this monster being here, it does bring up a new problem. Supergirl thinks this could lead to hope that there could be other things from Krypton that could have survived. Of course, for Superman, he knows that this is false hope. She is only going to be disappointed when she finds out there is nothing else left out there. On top of that, the monster was already partially dead, which means it makes the monster being here even more interesting. Of course, you do have Superman leave to deal with more things back home. But Supergirl is still going to hold on to that hope that there are more things from Krypton that have survived somehow. But you didn't have Supergirl meet her friend, the Silver Banshee, who of course we met in an earlier storyline a while back. But either way, Supergirl tells her everything that had happened earlier with the dragon. This may seem like this is not important, but actually it will be for a later story. Well, maybe. Because once Supergirl leaves, well that is the moment where we see something else is wrong with the Silver Banshee. Of course, we have no idea what is wrong with her, but maybe we will find out down the road. But Supergirl leaves to go back to her version of the Fortress of Solitude. Now once Supergirl has arrived back at her fortress and begins the process of finally relaxing and even thinking about taking a nap, because out of nowhere she feels tired. Well, that is the moment she wakes up and she is near the sun and she is confronted by our mysterious villain from earlier. Of course, he gives her his name and that would be Hell. And apparently he tells Supergirl that he is also one of the last survivors of Krypton. Of course, this is the new 52 Supergirl who is not really down to listen first to get answers. Instead, it is her trying to fight against this man and get some answers later which is honestly the worst thing you can do when it comes to fighting someone you truly don't know about at all. But this was the new 52 Supergirl for you. Now of course, her attack doesn't work because we learned that this man is on another power level when it comes to how strong he is. Either way, you do have him explain who he is. He tells her that he was sent away from Krypton by Superman's biological father, Jor-El because Jor-El knew that sooner or later the planet was not going to be around much longer. Either way, you have him say that he was sent away as a way to safeguard the history and the culture of Krypton, so he has been traveling a long time. Now he is not saying he is a son of Jor-El, but someone who is being trained or taught by Jor-El, so he sees Jor-El as a father figure. But since Hell has been traveling for a long period of time, his body has gone through a lot of changes, but that is the moment you have Hell tell us his master plan. Why is he here talking to Supergirl, fought against Superboy, and has been watching Superman as well? Well, he wants to bring back Krypton. He is going to go back in time to bring back their lost planet, 
hoping to save it before it is blown up like it was so many years ago. He then teleports him and Supergirl back down to Earth to show her how crazy this planet truly is, how insane this planet was and how it would be better for them to go back in time and bring their world back so that they don't have to deal with something like this at all. He takes her and him to a war zone and also we learn that he is able to hide their appearance so that no one can see them. Now this is not enough to prove to Supergirl that what he is saying is true. The Earth is horrible. Krypton is better. But also that what he is doing is not a lie. He will find a way to bring back their dead planet but he needs her help to reach that goal, meaning that she is going to have to help him to reach that goal, but to prove that she can trust him, he must do more things. He teleports him and her back to her fortress, where we learn that he is holding Superboy at. In the last chapter, he knocked out Superboy in their last battle, but of course, he tells Supergirl that he plans on actually killing Superboy since he is a clone. And let's not forget that clones were one of the worst things back on Krypton. Clones were made to help Krypton, but they turned evil and began killing people on their home world. But Supergirl doesn't let Hell actually kill Superboy because honestly, she feels bad for him. He did not ask to be made at all, but to keep Superboy alive, Supergirl brings up the idea that if Hell is going to bring back Krypton, they are going to need Superman's help as well. Now you do have Hell actually teleport Supergirl where Superman is at because he is hoping that Supergirl will be able to actually convince Superman to help them bring back Krypton. But here comes the big problem though. When Hell teleports Supergirl where Superman is at, well Superman is not Superman right now. He is Clark Kent. He is right now in the middle of an argument with Lois Lane in his apartment. And so you do have Supergirl walk into his apartment Apartment because she hears his voice and she knows that that's her cousin's voice and she goes towards it and when she walks in she's kind of like hey Clark or Superman I'm here and I need to talk to you which of course could blow his cover because Lois Lane has no idea that Clark Kent is Superman but on top of that with Supergirl walking in it's kind of like why in the world is Superman's long lost cousin in the same room with you Clark and she's looking for you. Now we actually pick up with Superman number 14 part 4 of this lovely crossover event. Now we actually have to jump back in time and the reason why because we want to know why in the world was Lois Lane in the apartment of Clark Kent? Well the reason why because remember Clark did get fired from the Daily Planet when he did stand up against his boss Morgan Edge but Lois Lane is here hoping that she can help him get his job back. But that is the moment you have Clark actually tell her that he is upset with her because she did not tell him that he was going to move in or she was going to move in with her new boyfriend. And that right there makes Lois Lane very angry because yes, the two of them do like each other, but at the same time, they're just friends. They're supposed to be close friends, but again, she was going to tell Clark when she was ready and she was not ready to tell him that just yet. And so right now she is highly upset with him being upset with her because she did not tell him. But on top of that, you do have her say, listen, I know that you have someone in your life as well and you're not telling me who that person is. And of course, in the new 52, Superman was dating Wonder Woman. But that is the moment you do have Supergirl walk in and we're back in the present day. Now, luckily for Clark Kent, Lois Lane actually sees Supergirl as a random cosplayer, which is very lucky for the man. But of course, he was able to actually get Lois Lane out of his apartment, but then he tells Supergirl, we have to talk somewhere else because right now you are about to ruin my secret identity with you being here right now, all Supergirl and everything. So let's go somewhere else to talk about what in the world you need to tell me. 
Now, that is the moment you have Superman and Supergirl go somewhere else so that they can talk to one another about what in the world is so important that Supergirl must tell Superman. And that is the moment she tells him that she has met someone who is also from Krypton. And apparently he has a plan to bring back Krypton. Now Superman is highly confused because he's kind of like, what in the world are you talking about? Who is from Krypton? And that is the moment where he is actually introduced to Hell himself. Now you do have Hell basically tell Superman everything we just learned in the last chapter. How he was working with Jor-El and Jor-El has sent Hell out into space as a way to safeguard the culture in the history of Krypton. But he says on his way to Earth, he had went through a lot of different difficulties. And by the time he arrived to Earth, Superman was already 27 years old, which means that he was stuck in space for 27 years. But either way, he says, yes, I am here to actually help you and her bring back Krypton. And Superman's like, no. Girl, you cannot believe this man. This man is completely a psychopath. There is no way he is from Krypton. But that is the moment you have Hell teleport Superboy where they are. And this is the first moment Superman has actually met Superboy, which is very huge because he's like, wait a second, there's a third one on our planet, a clone of me or possibly me or someone else. Where in the world did this clone come from? But that is the moment you have Hell say that he is planning on killing Superboy. And so, of course, you do have Superman say, no, I think not, and begins to battle against Hell. And he tells Supergirl to watch over Superboy while he tries to deal with Hell. But of course, Hell is too powerful for Superman and he begins the process of fighting back against Superman. Now that is the moment where you actually have Superman appear right in front of Supergirl. And right now he is very angry with her because he says, this is your fault. You brought him here. Ever since you arrived, the only thing you brought here is problems for me and everyone else. But that is the moment we see Superman actually beat down on Supergirl to the point he knocks her out. But that is when we come to find out that was not Superman. It was hell pretending to be Superman. He was able to play mind games with Supergirl right before he knocked her out so that when she wakes up, she'll think it was Superman who attacked her. You do have Superman come back in and he's kind of like, what in the world are you doing? You're going to make her believe it was me. But of course, that is part of Hell's plan because he realized that Supergirl is going to be the only one who is actually going to help him bring back Krypton. Now, you do have Superboy actually jump in to help out Superman fight against Hell. But here comes the big problem though. You do have Hell begin the process of actually dissecting Superboy to learn more about him. Because remember earlier, when it came to Hell learning about Superboy, he was kind of like, it's weird that you are a clone that was made on Earth. Earth is so far behind in technology, it amazes him how in the world they were able to actually make a clone. But either way, with him dissecting Superboy, this is going to lead to more problems down the road. But either way, you do have Superman and Superboy unable to actually defeat Hell to the point he says, I'm going to leave now with Supergirl and we are going to begin the process of actually bringing back Krypton and there is nothing you can do to stop us at all. Now, we do jump over to Superboy number 15, part five of this lovely crossover event where we actually pick up with Superboy right now laying down in serious pain because thanks to hell beating down on him but also because he was dissecting Superboy well of course right now Superboy body is going through some kind of change to the point where Superboy could possibly die but right now he is surrounded by the police force of Metropolis who are thinking about taking him in to hopefully learn more about him. But that is the moment you have Superman appear because he realized that Superboy needs some help. 
but to also he needs to learn more about Superboy. Because remember, Superman had no idea about Superboy at all until this very moment right here. And so right now it is Superman saying, I am going to save his life, but to also learn more about him at the same time. And so I'll take him to my fortress of solitude. Now, of course, you do have Superman take him to the fortress and begin to work immediately to save Superboy's life. But here comes the problem, though. He has no idea how in the world to actually help Superboy from whatever is happening to him because something is happening to him on a genetic level. But that is the moment you have Superman use his x-ray vision as a way to study Superboy. And that is the moment he comes to find out that actually Superboy has three different DNA strands, which is weird because usually you only have two. And so right now the question is, where in the world did that third one come from? Did it come from hell? If it did, this could lead to more problems down the road. Now, getting back over to Supergirl in hell, Hell took Supergirl back to her fortress, which is underwater. But of course, when she wakes up, she really did believe that was Superman who was beating down on her. She has no idea it was Hell who was pretending to be Superman as a way to trick her to be on his side. And so right now you have Supergirl saying that, okay, yeah, we cannot work with my cousin Superman. Forget about him. It's just you and me. And let's begin the process of bringing back Krypton to life once again. Now, getting back over to Superman, we do see that he called in Cyborg and Dr. Shea to help him figure out what in the world is wrong with Superboy. And that is the moment you have Cyborg say that right now, the three DNA strands are going through a genetic meltdown, which means that sooner or later, Superboy is going to die. If they want to save his life, they need to build some kind of cast, like a broken arm cast, as a way to help the DNA strands heal with one another, which means they need to build something to go around the DNA strands to let them heal to become one once again. And of course, right now, there is nothing like that on the planet Earth. But of course, that is when you have Superman realize that maybe his battle armor could actually work in a way to help the DNA strands recover from their genetic meltdown. Now, as soon as Superman puts on the battle armor on Superboy, two things happen, two very big things. The first thing is Superboy actually loses his telekinesis powers, which is very huge because when it comes to Superboy, he had relied on that a lot of times in his last few battles, and now it is gone. He no longer has his telekinesis powers like he used to have. On top of that, well, that is the moment you have Superman say the battle armor should have changed when it realized the bloodline is different. But of course, the battle armor did not change. Matter of fact, it perfectly bonded with Superboy. And that should have not happened, which means that most likely Superboy could be a clone of Superman. Now here comes another problem for Superboy, because with the battle armor basically cutting down on his telekinesis, it also does enhance his super strength and makes him more durable, which is very huge for Superboy, because in our earlier storylines, his durability would come and go. And the same for his super strength. There were moments where he actually had a lot of super strength, but there are also moments where he did not have a lot of super strength. But now he does, thanks to the battle armor. But of course, he feels useless without his telekinesis, so he begins the process of actually taking off the battle armor. Now, of course, you do have Superman being able to convince Superboy that he must leave on the battle armor because the battle armor is going to save his life. And so, of course, you do have Superboy put the battle armor back on as a way to save his life. But that is the moment you actually have Hell appear right in the room. And when he does, well, that is the moment you have Hell say that, hey, listen, I need to borrow your fortress. And that is the moment you actually have Hell be able to force Superman and Superboy out of 
the Fortress of Solitude. Now, when we jump over to Supergirl number 15, which is part six of this whole crossover event, we actually pick up with Supergirl in the past. And the reason why, because DC wanted to show us a flashback of Supergirl spending time with her best friend. Now, this may seem like it's not important at all, but actually it is for later parts of this crossover event. And the reason why I say that is because her best friend actually moved right before Supergirl was sent to Earth. And her friend moved to a city known as Kandor. And that city is going to play a very important role for this whole event. And you'll see here in a moment. But then we pick up with Supergirl in the present day. Now we do see that Supergirl is alone because hell is right now fighting against Superman and Superboy. Well, he was because the next page he does appear and he does tell Supergirl that he is one step closer to achieving his goal, meaning that he is one step closer of bringing back Krypton, but he must show her what he means when he says he is one step closer into actually achieving that goal. And so him and Supergirl actually teleport away so that he can show her what he truly means. Of course, he takes her right back over to the fortress of solitude that belongs to superman and so with him doing that of course supergirl realized where they're at at the moment and she is confused on why in the world they must come here to actually achieve their goal and that is when you have hell tell supergirl don't worry i'm going to show you just follow me now outside of the Fortress of Solitude, we actually see Superman and Superboy right now both realizing that they have been locked out of the Fortress of Solitude. And so with that happening, you have Superman say that somehow Hell was able to access the system of the Fortress of Solitude to lock out Superman. But that is the moment you have Superman say, don't worry, he has a plan but we need some extra help if we are going to be able to actually stop hell here and now. Now getting back over to Supergirl in hell, this is the moment where you actually have hell tell Supergirl what he meant earlier when they are one step closer into actually achieving their goal. Because you have hell show Supergirl the Bottle City of Kandor. Now the Bottle City of Kandor first appeared back in Action Comics in the New 52. And actually, it first appeared when Superman fought against Brainiac. Because Brainiac was going across the universe collecting different species as a way to collect or build his collection. And so with that being said, he went to Krypton before it blew up and he took the city of Condor as a way to build up his collection. And so ever since then, the small town known as Condor has been trapped inside this small bottle that was built by Brainiac. But you do have Hell tell Supergirl that there is something in the bottle city of Kandor that can actually help them achieve their goal to bring back Krypton. The only problem is Supergirl is the only person who can go inside the bottle city of Kandor. For some strange reason, Hell can't go inside there and we have no idea why. Now, once Supergirl gets inside the bottle city of Kandor, she does begin to look around to hopefully learn how in the world did this happen to Kandor. Now, while she is looking around, she does realize that everyone in this city is being kept in some kind of stasis, and she has no idea why. But that is the moment she is confronted by Hell, but in an astral form because he was unable to shrink down his body to go inside the bottle city of Kandor. But this is the moment where he actually tells Supergirl how in the world he is going to save Krypton. He's gonna go back in time right before Krypton blew up. But for him to do that, he needs one piece of technology that is actually here in Kandor that could possibly help them achieve that goal but that is the moment they do get attacked by some robots. 
Now, the reason why Supergirl must fight against these robots is because these robots were left behind by Brainiac as a way to make sure that the people who are kept here in stasis stay in stasis, which means if they break free, these robots will kill them or possibly put them back in stasis. But either way though, you do have Supergirl fight against these robots. But while fighting against these robots, well, that is the moment she comes to find out that her best friend, Tally, the one we saw earlier at the very beginning of this chapter, is actually kept here in stasis as well. Because remember, this best friend moved away right before Supergirl was sent to Earth, and she did move to Kandor. And of course, Kandor is now kept in this bottle city. And so right now she realized her best friend's being kept here in this stasis, and she feels bad for her friend, which of course, makes her even more want to work with Hell as a way to bring back Krypton. And so once she's able to actually defeat the robots, she asks Hell what in the world do they need from here so that they can bring back Kandor and bring back the rest of Krypton. Now you do have Hell take Supergirl into a different room where he shows her a quantum crystal. And this crystal is going to give him the ability to actually go back in time to save Krypton before it was destroyed. But here comes the big problem though. If she pulls out this quantum crystal, that could possibly mean that everyone who is kept here in stasis could most likely die. That even means her old best friend as well. But of course, you do have Hell tell Supergirl that she must do this because they need to go back in time to save their planet. And if they do that, that means that even though her best friend dies right now, the timeline will be reset where she's alive again, but back on their home planet. And so of course, you do have Supergirl take the Quantum Crystal. But here comes another thing as a way to wrap up part six of this crazy storyline because you didn't have supergirl in hell begin to kiss with one another and the reason why because these two have apparently built some kind of bond which means that now supergirl is most definitely going to try to help out hell to achieve that goal which means that sooner or later supergirl could most likely fight against Superman and Superboy as well. Now, we actually pick up with Superman number 15, which is part seven of this crossover event, where we actually pick up with Lex Luthor. Now, at this point in DC Comics in the New 52, Lex Luthor was actually being kept in prison. And so right now, he's actually in prison at the moment. Now, we actually pick up outside the prison, where we pick up with Superman and Superboy, as they are trying to walk inside the prison, because Superman needs to talk to Lex Luthor. Now, this prison is actually very different than your usual prison, and the reason why, because it was specially made as a way to make sure that Lex Luthor does not break out once again. And so, of course, this prison was made to hold him. And you do have a lot of military forces around this base as a way to make sure that Lex Luthor does not get out once again. But of course, you do have the military try to attack Superman and Superboy. But of course, their attacks did nothing. And you didn't have Superman being able to convince the guards to give him the ability to actually go talk to Lex Luthor, which they do say yes, and he goes inside. Now, I do want to point out that this prison was actually made by Lex Luthor himself. And the reason why, because when it comes to Lex Luthor, he has the smartest mind in the world, which means that no matter what kind of prison was put around him, he would find a way out of that prison. And so, of course, he had to make a prison for himself to make sure that he could not escape. And so with that being said, you do have Superman and Superboy having to go through different obstacles as a way to just go and talk to Lex Luthor. But of course, they were actually able to finally get to Lex Luthor so that they can have a conversation about you know who, which of course is hell. 
Now, when Superman arrives to talk to Lex Luthor, you do have him ask Lex about hell. But this is one of the many big moments in this conversation because you have Lex tell Superman that he knows about hell because Lex has been watching hell watching Superman. And so he knew about hell even before Superman and Superboy had arrived here. But here comes another big thing. When Superman asks Lex, is it possible for Hell to go back in time to save Krypton, you have Lex say yes, it is possible, but here comes the problem. He needs to do a reverse Big Bang, which means to sacrifice an entire solar system as a way to go back in time just to save Krypton, which means Earth and its solar system is about to be destroyed so that hell can go back in time to save Krypton. Now here comes another big moment because you actually have Lex Luthor tell us and Superboy that Superman already knew that. He knew what hell needed to do to go back in time. The reason why he came here to this prison just to talk to Lex is because Superman knows that he may have to kill hell just to save the day. But the problem is Superman does not want to kill. And so he came here to Lex to kind of get an idea or to be talked out of the idea of actually killing hell. But you do have Superman and Superboy actually leave because now they know that hell is going to possibly destroy an entire solar system. Now this is where we are actually going to end today's comic book video. Because while you have Superman and Superboy leave the prison, you do have Superman say they need help if they're going to stop hell. Now you do have Superboy bring up the Teen Titans. And of course, this is the moment where you have Superman say, wait a second, what in the world are Teen Titans? Because apparently Superman had no idea about that super team being out there. But either way though, you do have him say, no, we need some better help than Teen Titans. We need the Justice League. And that is the moment you have some of the Justice League actually appear to help out Superman fight against hell. And this is where we are going to end today's comic book video. So please hit the like button down below and subscribe. Also, if you have any suggestions on books I should read, well, please let me know in the comments below because you never know, your suggestion could be a future video down the road. But I do hope you enjoy today's comic book video. Later, guys.